Lesson 2.8, Multiply Using Mental Math. I hope you were able to see the previous videos for this chapter. It'll make it easier to understand this lesson. We can use mental math and properties to help us multiply. By using properties of multiplication, we can multiply friendly numbers first or break apart numbers to be friendlier. And friendly numbers are numbers that are easy to add, subtract, multiply, or divide. And remember, the commutative property of multiplication states that when the order of two factors is changed, the product is the same. We first learned about that in video 2.1. And the associative property of multiplication states that we can group factors in different ways using parentheses and get the same product. The distributive property states that multiplying a sum, so that would be the 47 here, by a number is the same as multiplying each addend, so it would be 40 plus 7 as addends then we would just add the products. And we can use the distributive property to combine multiplication and addition, or multiplication and subtraction. If we have 2 times 47, we can do 2 times 40 plus 7 to use it with addition. We can also think of 2 times 47 as a 50 minus 3, and do 2 times 50 minus 3 to use it with subtraction. Here we have the equation 2 times 13 times 50. We can use the commutative property to change the order of these factors for mental math. Then we can multiply the friendly numbers first. We can do 2 times 50, which is 100. Then we can multiply it times 13. 100 times 13 is 1,300. For this equation, we can use the associative property to change the grouping to friendlier numbers for mental math. We have 4 times 25 times 5. We can change the grouping to 4 times 25. That's 100. Then we can multiply it times 5, and we'll get 500. We can use both the commutative and associative properties for mental math. We have 4 times 9 times 250. Using the commutative property, we'll put the parentheses back here and the 250 right here. Then we'll use the associative property to change the grouping, so we have 250 times 4, which is 1,000. Now we can multiply it by 9 very easily mentally. We get 9,000. We can use having and doubling to multiply large numbers. Having means cutting it in half, and doubling would be multiplying it by two. We split one factor in half, so half of eight is a four. We multiply four times 25. Then we get 100, and we double the product. We do 100 times two. It's 200. We can also think of this method as using the distributive and associative properties. If we have 8 times 25, we can break the 8 into two factors of 2 and 4. 2 times 4 times 25. We can regroup it with the associative property as 4 times 25, which is 100, then multiplying it times 2, which is 200. We cut this in half, we multiplied and got a product, and then we just doubled the product. We can use the distributive property with addition to do mental math. We have 4 times 325. We can break the 325 apart into a 300 plus 25. We regroup and do 4 times 300, which is 1,200 and 4 times 25, which is 100, and we think 1,200 
plus 100 is 1,300. We can use the distributive property with subtraction to do mental math. We have 5 times 299. We think 5 times 300 minus 1. 5 times 300 is 1,500. Then 5 times 1 is 5. And we subtract 5 from the 1,500. It's equal to 1,495. Here we have another example where we can use the distributive property to break apart a factor and solve the equation using mental math. We have 6 times 211. We think 6 times 200 plus 11. 6 times 200 is 1,200. 6 times 11 is equal to 66. Now we just add the 1,200 plus 66 to get 1,266. When multiplying mentally, some numbers are easier to multiply by a one-digit factor like 25 or 250. And we can think four quarters in a dollar. So 4 times 25 is equal to 100. 4 times 250 is equal to 1,000. Also, numbers that have only one non-zero digit are easier for mental math such as 10, 20, 30, 40, and so on, 100, 200, 300. So see how there's only one digit that isn't a zero? Using the distributive property with addition or subtraction is related because either way, we are breaking apart a factor. And we can identify when the di distributive property is being used in an equation because one of the factors will be broken apart. We know this is distributive property because the 13 was broken into a 10 plus a 3. And we can identify the relationship between numbers and use mental math to find the unknown number. Here we have 21 times 30 is equal to 630. So 21 times 32, notice that was 30 and now it's 32. What would that equal? What would be the unknown number? So we think 32 is 2 more than that 30. This means we need 2 times 21 more. Because we had 3 tens times the 21, now we have 3 tens and 2 ones times the 21. 2 times 21 is equal to 42, so we need 42 more than 630. Were you able to follow that? Does that make sense? So 21 times 32 is equal to 630 plus the 42. We had 630, but then when there were two more ones, these two ones needed to be multiplied times 21. So we added 21 times 2 to this product and got 672. Look at this one. We have 7 times 40 is equal to 280. So 14 times 20 is equal to what? So look at the relationship between the numbers. 7 and now it's a 14. It doubled, didn't it? 40 and now it's 20. It was cut in half, wasn't it? So this is like halving and doubling. We're going to get the same product. So we think, well, 7 times 2 is equal to 14. It got doubled. And 40 divided by 2 is equal to 20. That's the 20. It got halved. We're going to have the same product. So if 7 times 40 is equal to 280, then 14 times 20 is equal to 280. Now, if that was confusing, let's try it with some smaller numbers. So if we have 2 times 10 is equal to 20, and we double the 2 to be a 4, and we cut the 10 in half to be a 5, 4 times 5 is also equal to 20. One number was doubled, one number was cut in half. It has the same product. Using the distributive property with addition or subtraction, we'll get the same answer. Let's take a look at this table. It says carnival ride ticket prices. So you can buy one ride, you can buy 10 rides, 
looks like you save some money or 25 rides and you save even more money and they've got tickets for child 12 and under adult and senior well mr lee and four adult friends each bought 10 ride tickets how much money did they spend all together so mr lee is an adult and we think mr lee and four adult friends is five adults we count him and his four friends an adult ticket for 10 rides is $27. We're going to do five times $27. We can break the $27 into $20 and $7 and do five times $20, which is $100, and five times $7, which is $35. It equals $135. And that was using addition. And notice using addition, we had a plus sign between all of these. We had it between our add-ins, we had it between our parentheses, and we had it between our partial products. When we use subtraction, we can think 5 times $27 is equal to 5 times $30 minus $3. $30 minus $3 is $27, isn't it? But now we're using subtraction. We do 5 times $30, which is $150, and we do 5 times $3, which is $15, and we think $150 minus $15 is equal to $135. So it didn't matter where we, whether we used the distributive property with addition or subtraction, we got the same answer. In our next lesson, 2.9, we're going to continue working with multiplication. We're going to see how a diagram can help us solve a multi-step word problem. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.